Hi everyone, welcome back to another model build video. Today we're going to be looking at Metal Earth and this one is from the Icon X series. Um, you can't see it because it's cut off from the top here. So if you look at this other package, you're going to see this Icon X or sometimes it's called the Premium Series. And this one is from the movie Star Wars and it's actually the 40th year anniversary edition for M Empire Strikes Back. And this one is going to be of the Stormtrooper shown in the movie. Now, if we take a look at the back of the packaging, you're going to see that it's rated at a difficulty rating and it shows several sheets here. So it looks to be about about three sheet uh, build, I would say. A typical model builds are uh, about two sheets for Metal Earth. So this one's actually going to be a little bit larger. So let's take a look at the contents of the package and you're going to find an instruction manual and you're going to find colored sheets and each sheet will have colored parts. So that uh, once you finish the model, it will actually look like a complete model with finish color on it. While a lot of the typical Metal Earth builds will actually have just a silver kind of finish to it. So looking at the total number of sheets, it looks to be that it's actually going to be two and a half sheets instead of a three sheet uh, model. So if we take a look at the instructional manual, you're going to see a letter and a number corresponding to each part. So the, the letter actually corresponds to the sheet and then the, the number corresponds to the part number. So if you look at the first sheet of the instruction manual, you're going to see a sheet list and go find the part number and the sheet that corresponds to the part that you're about to build. And using a wire snipper, go in between the where the triangle tab is connected to the part on the sheet and just give a light uh, snip with the wire snipper to remove the part from the sheet. So I like cutting out all the parts to a certain part of the instructional manual instead of having to do it in each time just so that it actually saves a little bit of time. Whenever possible, I try to hide the tabs um, so that when you're pushing it through the hole, I try to push it inwards so that once you crimp it, you're actually not going to see any of the tabs. Sometimes this is not possible, but whenever possible, I just try to see if I can hide the tabs, uh, which you don't need to do, but it does look cleaner in the end. So the nice thing about this kit is that a lot of the parts where like the legs uh, will actually have an L or an R on some of the plates to help you identify which one is the right leg or the left leg part because some of the parts do look identical but they are slightly different. A little tip for working with curvatures and cylindrical shapes is to actually start off with a bigger circle and start bending it little by little until you get the shape that you need. Um, a lot of times if you're working with the exact shape rod, uh, you might actually overbend the pieces which will leave like a stress mark. So trying to reduce all that is better by just going with bigger and just slowly working into the shape that you need. I try using a very thin plier to work on the small shapes because the normal pliers that they recommend are a little bit too wide so it's actually hard to handle small pieces. Pay close attention to the instruction manuals to see when the tabs are being closed or not for the, the cylindrical shapes. Because a lot of times um, it looks like you're supposed to be closing it because of the orientation of the, the drawing. But actually, you're not supposed to close it till later after you wrap it around certain parts. Um, and the reason for that is that, with, for example, this part here, um, all the little boxes needs to be um, placed onto the cylindrical shape before you close it off. And it actually gives you a lot better access um, on the back side. And so please pay attention to the manual. I will break that once in a while and I'll show you sometimes and I'll mention it on the comments uh, when it's actually good to do so because the sequencing sometimes doesn't make sense per the manual. So I try to break that whenever I think it's a better method. But for the most part, just pay attention to this instructional manual. Anytime you're dealing with long strips, um, it's actually better to hold the long strip side with the plier and then using your fingertips to bend the short tab. Um, I didn't do it here, so it actually um, kind of warps a little bit. But if you're holding down the long strip side with the plier, um, you're actually preventing it from warping as you're actually bending the tab down. Pay close attention to the orientation of the R um, because they, the R should be aligning to each other. Um, I actually made this mistake and you'll see later when I'm actually undoing this part so that I can actually have the right orientation. 
This is another tricky part. If you look close at the instruction manual, the top tab is actually not being closed off because you actually have to put another of the, the round piece in before you close out the top side. Uh, because the manual shows the bottom two, you kind of have a tendency to close out the very top one, but please try to avoid that. Another good tip is um, when you're actually scratching the surface and you kind of remove part of that white paint, you can actually use an oil-based marker or like a Sharpie. There's a Sharpie paint marker um, that's a white color that you can use to kind of just paint over and actually looks very close to the original white on the sheet. This looks more complicated than it really is. What you're really doing is just bending the top of the shoe and then the back side of the shoe and that's all you, you really need to do. And then you're gonna be bending down the top plate so that you're closing off the shoe on the top. I like to use the top tab uh, and close it in first and use it as a hinge to close off the side tabs. And this trick is gonna actually be very useful for some of the parts in this model, especially for the elbow joint that you're gonna be putting two of the elbow joints together. You, you can use the same trick where using one of the tab as like a hinge or a leverage to be able to rotate it into the other two holes. As I explained earlier, for the curvatures, it's nice to start with a bigger curvature and start working your way inwards until you get the right shape. And so what I like using is a step ring rod, um, which is actually used for jewelry making, especially for rings, I believe. And so going with the bigger step and then going up the step as you're getting smaller and smaller curvature allows you to kind of control the amount of curvature that you're going to be uh, curving the sheet. There are times where you're gonna have a piece with two separate parts on it, and it looks like it's better to sometimes bend it separately, but in this case, because you wanna have a uniform curvature, it's actually better to curve it at the same time. This is another good example of an area where the tabs you would actually want to bend outwards. Um, you will be exposing the tabs, but it actually is a little bit too difficult to try to reach the tab if you're um, putting it inwards, especially for the last tab that's on the bottom. As I mentioned earlier, I realized later on that this piece was actually not in the right orientation, that um, it actually looked awkward as I tried to put the die and the, the cows together so i actually had to take it apart and to uh, redo this part so um, as i said earlier please pay attention to the orientation of the r's uh, when you're putting that piece together So even though the manual uh, kind of tells you to kind of bend the waist part first, I actually decided to put the 
the the crotch kind of armor on first before bending it and that kind of allows me to bend both of them at the same time because if you're bending that first there might be a little gap between that crotch plate and the, the side waist so you would kind of want to reduce that by being able to bend it together at the same time So this is an instance where I would say do not follow the manual. Um, the manual actually tells you to close off the tab for this kind of cylindrical waist. Um, but instead of doing that, it's actually better to close it off after you've attached all the pieces onto this kind of piece here. And the reason why is because it's kind of hard to access the backside and to kind of twist the tab into place. So you, the, those little uh, boxes you're adding on might be a little bit loose. So it's actually better to just have a better access from the backside before you close it off. For these kind of round cylindrical pieces with a top, um, it's actually best to create the circular shape first before you bend the top side down. And this makes it easier so that the curvature is actually more uniform. If you bend that part down first and you try to curve it, one side of the curvature will be a little bit flat, so it looks a little bit um, kind of uneven, and you might see a little bit of a gap in between the top and the circular shape. Even though the manual tells you to twist the tab, I found it easier to just bend the tab and just crimping it because it's kind of hard to reach at a good angle to twist the tab um, once the circular shape is actually closed off. So with the chest plate, it actually is a lot easier than it looks. So all you're doing is there's a lot of these small little strips hanging off of the main chest plate. And so all you need to do is just bend it down slightly. You don't have to do a, a big bend and you just kind of just work your way in until all the edges meet. And um, it's actually not a big bend as much as you think it would be. When you're attaching a piece with multiple tabs, sometimes it's easier to um, hold down one of the tabs by actually twisting the tabs in or bending it, um, just so that you're not trying to put all the tabs in because as you're working on one side, the, the opposite side might start coming out. So it's actually easier to just kind of have them all in place, uh, starting with one tab at a time and just closing it off. So this is a little bit tricky, but it's not a perfect conal shape or, and it's not a perfect cylindrical shape. It's actually half of each. And so one side is actually going to have a tapered look while the other side has more of a straight perpendicular edge. This is kind of a lesson learned, but I realized that it might be actually easier to not close this part off yet because you're actually going to be joining the two pieces together and uh, because it's a kind of a, all the tabs are sticking out, it is kind of hard to uh, 
join the pieces together that if the one piece did not have the one side closed off you can actually wrap it around the other part and then be able to twist off all the tabs and then close off that last piece So one of my biggest gripe about the instruction manuals for Metal Earth series is that a lot of times when you're closing off the tabs, the instruction manual shows it on the back side of the model. So it's kind of hard to see if you're closing off the tab or not. And in this case, I accidentally closed the tab off before I was supposed to do it. And so the only warning I can tell you is to always, always look very carefully about when to close the tab or not on the instruction manual because it might not be very clear. And if you're not sure, look ahead to see when you will close certain tabs so that you can actually pre-plan it ahead of time so you don't make the mistake that I, I did by having to actually undo the tab and then re-closing uh, it after putting the correct parts in. So remember that hinge trick that I was talking about? This is the perfect example. If you actually connect the tab on the elbow side first, then you can use it as a hinge to kind of just uh, rotate the, the bottom of the arm in so that the, the tab on the top actually just slides into the hole. So uh, I wasn't paying attention and I totally missed the two strips I was supposed to add on to the forearm. So I'm actually doing this kind of after the fact. It's still doable, but uh, it's a lot easier if you just follow the instruction manuals at this point. So there are times when the holes may not be open and it's actually going to be closed off because the paint actually dried over the hole. So what you can do at those instances is just use X-Acto knife or a hobby knife to kind of just recut the hole because the paint is very thin so it's very easy to just recut that opening. So this is actually a lot easier than it looks. Um, so just picture a box. So you're bending down all the sides of the arm or the hand until you create like a funky looking box. And then on the finger side, you're actually kind of bending it ha a little bit so that it kind of looks like a beveled look on the fingertip. Instead of the way that I've done it, actually an easier method is to use a dapping tool or like a fondant shaping tool with the spear head and what you can use, uh, you can use that to roll the edges so that kind of curves inwards and then you can kind of connect all the taps together to create the shoulder uh, pad. After all the tabs are connected, I actually like using the dapping tool um, edge to kind of just roll out the edges because the edges are going to have like a sharp bend to it. So kind of using the fondant tool actually help roll it out and kind of smooth out that edge. If 
if you bend the tabs slightly so that all the tabs are parallel, it actually makes it a lot easier to fit through the, all the holes for this kind of uh, shoulder um, plate. So something I learned from a later uh, build was that if you actually bend the whole tabs down a little bit, especially when you're having to slide all these tabs together in at an angle, it actually makes it a lot easier for the tabs to slide in because now you're not kind of uh, in parallel with the tab hole and you have to kind of bend it in. So if you actually bend the hole first, it actually makes it a lot easier. So just a little note, when you're adding that kind of plate in, into this box here later, um, it says to twist the tab, but it's actually better if you bend the tab because when I did this uh, with the twisting, I realized that even with the twisting, the tip of the tab slightly interferes with the back of the stormtrooper that it started bulging out a little bit. And so if you actually bend it, you actually reduce the chance of that tab trying to stick out. Now for this kind of back plate, there's really no need to bend the back uh, too much. You actually just need to kind of bend the sides a lot. Um, and then the back, you can kind of just use your fingers to slightly press and create a slight curve. But it, it can actually be flat if you want it to be. Um, the more important thing is to make sure that the sides are actually rounded. So once you connect the back plate onto the, the, the two strips on the shoulder, uh, the shoulder straps, um, you can actually use that kind of like a hinge, like if you're closing an awning door, uh, you know, so you can actually use that to kind of bend it downwards and then you can wrap the, the back around and then you can close off the tabs on the side. So instead of trying to get all the tabs into the hole, uh, just start off with the top one, uh, which are the one on the upper back area, and then just work your way in with each tab one by one until you get to the, the side and then you can close out the side at the very end. The helmet can be a little bit tricky, but I can give you a little bit step-by-step -step, uh, description to kind of help break down the build. So you start off with the, the mask where you're actually creating a circle and you're going to pinch the front a little bit so that the front is a little bit narrow. 
And then with the visor, uh, you're going to actually curve the visor and then put it from the backside of the, the helmet. And then you're going to put the top plate in and this is going to help hold the top of the helmet. And now for the helmet, I actually am showing you the build that I did for the Darth Vader video. Um, because the method is a lot easier to do it this way. It's actually a lot cleaner than the way I've been doing it for Stormtrooper. So what I like doing is using a dapping tool and to start kind of rolling the edges until it starts curving in. And then I start working in from each side, um, putting the tabs in one by one until I get to the middle part. Because the middle part will have two uh, tabs sticking out that you can pl place in. And then after that, um, after all the tabs are placed in, I will go back with the dapping block and kind of just roll out the edges to make sure that it's a smooth finish at the end. Now this little strip that you're going to be adding to the top of the helmet, um, be aware that the middle tab actually has to bend down. It actually didn't show in the proper sequence or it actually showed it later where it's a really small little part that's hard to see, but that needs to be bent down before you attach it in. I made that mistake of not doing that and I had to ha actually uh, retroactively try to fit it in, which ended up scratching the helmet. Uh, so once you put the helmet onto the, the visor or the, the front of the mask itself uh, onto the plate, then we can actually move on to the next part of the helmet. So for the bend for this one, just take your time and you know, it, it requires a lot of patience. I actually ended up using my fingers. Um, so you just kind of start bending each strip that has about four different bends in. And instead of trying to do each bend individually, you can just kind of use your fingers to kind of bend it and pinch it a little bit to kind of start creating the shape. You don't want to overbend this because it can actually snap very easily. Um, and then once you get the rough shape, you can start wrapping it around the helmet uh, visor. And then um, you can actually start putting in the ear pieces in. And the ear pieces, it's pretty much two long strips on each side of this middle part. And you're just curving it until, and as you're following along the edge of that middle part. And so once you're doing that, um, the hard one I found out was the, the inner curve actually is a little bit hard to fit in that tab. So you might have to warp it a little bit to try to get a good fit. And then we can now add on these two kind of side ear pieces. I actually don't know what they're called. Um, and then you can actually just twist it in from the inside. And then um, we're gonna start creating the kind of the front of the mask where the breathing area is. So we created three small pieces that it will be attached to the front of the mask. And so one is just two slight bends on the side. And then you're going to have the two of the cylindrical shapes with the top that you're going to be adding on. The next part after this is that you're actually going to be wrapping around this kind of U-shaped piece around this triangle shape. Um, and so you're, you want to actually find the curvatures ahead of time and kind of use the, the plate as a guide to see how much you're bending and where you're bending it. But you don't need to have it exact because you can actually um, do what I did, which was just create like a triangle shape around it. You don't have to worry about every single bend as much because after you get the wrap around the plate, you can actually pinch it with your fingers to kind of make sure that it follows the curve a little better. And the, once that front mask part is done, you can attach it to the helmet. And um, it's actually easier if you bend the whole tab a little bit so they have a little bit better axis for the tab to go into. And then once you're closed off and you're done with the helmet, you can attach it to the body, the upper body of the Stormtrooper. Once we're done with the base, we're going to attach it to the Stormtrooper and they'll actually finish the Stormtrooper portion of the model. And then the rest of the video is actually going to be about the blaster that he's going to be holding. And I apologize uh, for the crummy quality of the video. I realized that I was actually off the camera a lot, but not just that, but my GoPro actually overheated quite a few times that I realized that it did not record some of the steps. So um, I'm trying to write down the description of what I was doing for each step. So hopefully you can kind of follow along still. 
um, at the end of the day, it's what it is is that you have your main body of the blaster, which is kind of a curved U shape. And then after that, everything just gets attached. And the hardest part is the scope um, that you're going to be adding on the top of it, because it's like a very small box with a very small cone. And um, you're going to be adding it onto another kind of a stepped uh, kind of box looking thing. And that's probably the hardest part about this blaster. Everything else is relatively simple. The only other one would be the other kind of like additional ammo kind, kind of uh, slot that you're putting in onto the side that you're seeing here because uh, it has a lot of these steps and it's kind of a single piece that you're adding on to each other. Um, so kind of just those are the two parts to watch out for and make sure that you don't over bend the pieces because um, it might snap and at that point don't worry just use super glue or like um, like insecure to just kind of glue it in together because because it's black you, you can always just paint it over and no one would really see it. Now that we're finishing up the blaster, we're going to be putting it onto the Stormtrooper. And then after that, the whole model is complete. And um, I actually really enjoyed making this model. I, I really think that Metal Earth came a long way with these builds and they're starting to become a lot more sophisticated. And I really did enjoy the Darth Vader, the Stormtrooper and the uh, Boba Fett model because um, the complexity, but at the end it looks very nice and refined where I felt like something like the Iron Man model still felt a little kind of odd, like the shapes, but these are really true to the movie uh, characters. And I just think it looks really great at the end. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you do, please hit that like button. And if you like watching more of these type of videos, hit the subscribe button and make sure that you get notified when the next video comes out. And as always, thank you for watching.